hello and a warm good afternoon to all of you myself jacob b jacob i'm an inmate of um, the ut narayana gurukula and i'm here to present my um, my paper titled the overall structure of atmopadesha shatakam by narayana guru so let's get started with our topic the overall structure of atma upadesha shadakam the search for the self has moved and stirred the intuitive warmness of many a great poet artist anguished novelist cafe philosophers what not even a san francisco dharmapam or a nilgiri existentialist the placement of the self has had on many occasions baffled the curious minds of even serious thinkers in narayana guru however what has been searched for finds a unitive and all inclusive garage where all the revalued and polished self run supercars find a safe and a neutral haven well protected from biased conclusions and sheltered from one sided rains and like a professional racer shifting gears with comfortable ease the guru here in the 100 verses of self instruction atmopadesha shadagam one of his one of his earliest and abstract work concerning the unitive and central self incorporating all aspects of existence subsistence and value factors in a concrete and well structured order leap from one graded gear to another and smooth transitions seemingly difficult and strenuous he is able to maintain a harmonious rhythm to the overall structure of the text in applaudable ease and since the mystical speedster himself has set the sound bre- speed breakers here as a wonderstruck onlooker one may find it hard to swallow the fact that this self inquiry has no speed limits in the first place um the mystical text begins with a conventional hint to the supreme with a vowel a uh, which according to the bhagavad gita represents the absolute a river in translation knowledge has a wider area of functional interest than what is commonly attributed in the words of his dear disciple nataraj guru the stuff or substance constituting knowledge whether subjective or objective is the same thus the popular duality still under debate is abolished in the light of a negation sliding down to a common neutral ground the sensible and the intelligible merge to a unitive whole here wave and the ocean a favorite analogy to the vedantin is employed here to verify the subtle and complex sometimes even irreducible and undis- undistinguishable relation of the phenomenal with the higher or transcendental and all that adheres to being and becoming of the phenomenal and are subjected to the laws of nature there has to reside beneath or beyond that which is free of them at once as divine whales sleep in underwater tranquility in the beginning verses of the text two poles are of much considerations the first one concerning purely the inner organ and the other the supreme sun equated to the void beyond later in the coming verses the guru takes a subtle leap in associating it with the phenomenal world of panchatantras as a witness though direct references to the self is reserved for later verses the guru in the initial verses of verses itself directs our ontological gazes towards a certain supreme sun rising in the void and of the inner organ too both should be viewed unitively to gather a sublime feeling of togetherness um since varying subjects of individually substantial importance have been single-handedly stitched together by the guru in this remarkable text it becomes a difficulty to extract out each fiber out of this vibrant cloth for the time being only a wholehearted dedication to the overall essence is to be envisaged psychology mythology 
mysticism, scientific experiments and certitudes, phenomenology, transcendentalism, everyday human reality, ethics, logic, morality, all have found a comfortable space here as the clueless animals of biblical lands happily console from flooding miseries in the divine warmth of Noah's ark. Sometimes a mystical abstract note to a transcendental sun, other times simple references to everyday activities of waking and deep sleep, both woven tightly into a common fabric of neither mind nor matter. By the 10th verse, with an intriguing experimental method, we touch upon the weighted, suspenseful subject of our search, the self that is common to all. It is important to note that only after close intimations were the a priori and a posteriori, tripudi and simple realities that may not even be realities in a deeper sense, we reach into the heart of the inquiry. After carefully transcending the subject-object complications and other such dualities, and devoting analogical verses of complementary nature, which is a common sight throughout the whole text, the Guru pulls up the red curtain, and brings into limelight the personally impersonal self that is common to all. For both, the word of response is one. This formally announced is the great voyage to the self. As the evergreen ship sails down the mighty seas, and as the seeker is familiarized with the common and neutral nature of the multiple nature of the manifested eyes, the instructions take a more generalized and abstract and deviative road on the path towards self-realization. For the continuing verses are layered with general advices to the dedicated seeker in cancelling out the polarities involved in the dialectical run towards the self. Here, deeper metaphysical or mystical sparks shine as the verses attain a touch of lyrical and cryptic magnificence with frequent notes to mystical analogies. The Guru emphasizes on the importance of downing the ashes of the three modes to attain a fruitful and unitive vision of perfection. Such and such are the various methodology employed to fully extract the nature of the self. The continuing verses elaborate the same thus bringing into effect a complete and precise notion of a general good or morality based not on just a priori postulations as is often in categorical philosophies, but rather hung on the unitive non-dual approach to the self, definite and all-inclusive, the former having its basis on ontological grounds. An in-depth pondering of polished experience is required to fully pronounce the subtleties in each verses. The search of grounds turn denser and thickly tarred as the mystical highway right transcends, swiftly with much ease many puzzling paradoxes or dualities like that of the Anya and Sama, sameness or otherness. The fourth state of Thudia consciousness and of a certain awareness that is all-providing and cosmically vibrating is introduced in the following series of verses, ranging from 30. The later is termed as All There Is. Verse 37 is devoted entirely to emphasize on the difficulties commonly stumbled upon in transcending the obscurity of the other. Immanuel Kant applauds the intelligible world as the totality of rational beings considered as things in themselves. At the same time, he tacks further penetration into this world of intelligibles as an impossibility. It must surely be from the depths of such impossible heights the Guru marvelously subdues the free-roaming obscurity of the other, for it is easily possible for an amateur seeker to fall into the self-centered traps of self-appraisal. The sameness the Guru enigmatically points out here, quite affirmatively, lies beyond. 
This beyond must be gathered wholeheartedly and merged or applied into the rough and ragged valleys of the horizontal or vice versa. In reference to his original contribution of pure intuition, Henry Bergson claimed Kant's propositions to be derived from simple misunderstandings. Many of Kant's propositions. It is pure intuition, according to Bergson, from which springs forth all deductive reasonings or analysis. So too, in the present text, the usage of the term this, as is envisaged in complementary verses of 41 and 42, is of great importance. In his commentary on the same text, Guru Muninarayana Prasad points that that which was meant to be clarified by the example itself becomes the example as knowledge in verse 42 gains a superior status when the Guru incorporates it with this is knowledge. Even the simple act of experiencing intuitively pursued could sublimely lead to the inseparable oneness of all forms of knowledge within consciousness. As indicated by Guru Muni Prasad, thus, this oneness of knowledge element in all forms of knowledge leads us to certainty of the oneness itself. But complications loom large, though Nataraja Guru himself declares the result of our inquiry to be a simple event which is not even an event. For it is the above mentioned oneness that alone gives primacy to whatever the this signifies. To quote Guru Muni again, what has even this generic oneness for its specific aspect is something beyond the grasp of our reasoning. And it is here a meditative inlook becomes a prerequisite. Thus, by employing both an intuitive inward pondering and a deductive methodology, we finally arrive at a non-dual consciousness reality from where all generic and specific experiences originate, that which the word this rightly denotes to the unconditioned or nirpatika. Thus, striking a purely Vedantic code all experiences are reduced to a master experience, this is knowledge, and the individual consciousness ultimately merges and becomes lost in the generic of all generic, this. To symbolically represent the total structure of this text, let us utilize two pyramids placed together, one inverted, positioned above the other, with each of the pointed top meeting in a middle ground. The second half of this instructive te text takes a different methodological character, that of ascending dialectics. After having properly identified the unitiveness of the self, rescuing it from the obscure hands of dualities and multiplicity, the Guru conducts a deepened deductive come inductive inquisition, blending the newly formed unitiveness to a common value factor of higher order before bringing them under the compressed bracket of awareness. A strict and precise three-layer deductive methodology is employed and any curious onlooker, awestruck by its glowing brilliance, may be tempted to ask if there may be any sort of initiation from the side of the Absolute after the penetrating inquisition having reached the gates of the homogeneous grounds. Merging of the self with the self is implied here. The tables have been turned, cards have been flipped, the inverted pyramid lay exposed. The second, of the, the second half of this perfectly structured text thus begins with an inductive suggestion to the I-ness and thisness culminating from the awareness which we have discerned as the common tip or meeting point of the two pyramids. Okay, so this is the next half. Um, 
the other pyramid. As the transcendental highways gradually dissolve and melt, and in its turn, two open pyramids of ontological and teleological fragments are established, the intermediate seeker is expected to gently like a drifting firefly flutter through each of its categorical compartments maintaining tight the structural pattern the guru has designed in the later which with its ontological origin is capable of illuminating equally the sequel hearts of an academician or a commoner both the deductive and inductive methods have for its basis a common neutral tip where the first one dissolves into and where the later has its origin the later which is more closely looked upon in the second half the efficient utilization of complementary sets of verses should not be overlooked for they contain immeasurable value content be it in regard to a deductive come inductive approach to unveil the hidden subtle treasures obscured by the endless potency of maya or be it the more earthly related contradictory stack points of heterodoxy and orthodoxy inductive methodology here is to be translated to not just mere generalizations of experiences but that of higher grounds the vagabond flies the vagabond flies that we are keep drifting through the boundless spaces of the two pyramids from the ontological to the teleological and from there to graded axiological systems the guru opens the maya curtains so as one may attempt a quick glance at the glorious the waveless ocean as the prime source of awareness the novo known duality the innumerable countables and measurables the ambivalent poles of truth the function of senses as designs are all properly expressed and transcendent in these series of interrelated verses um okay uh, three corresponding verses are dedicated to fully revealing the ego sense as it enters the scene when the purusha prakriti duality is underlined wherein the former oscillate within the amplitude of the two poles such a dancing movement is disclosed by the guru by proposing the snake and the rope analogy one among the vedantins favorite where the ego sense gets softened and reduced to the background with a sudden mental presentation of the reality in front um Okay. the negative element of libido is introduced through the analogy of the libido chariot wherein is mounted the eye sense carrying within the image of the self verse 70 exhibits the complete unraveling of consciousness with the emergence of the eye sense and the body sense that keeps alternating with it ego sense here is to be understood from a global level where from springs forth specialized dose of perception and the libido unwinds into the stage of ego consciousness chitta cultivates a bipolar relation with the objects of interest outside it is here the libido and the objects of extremes equated to either respective poles traverse the purusha prakriti duality now closing in on the last quarter of the text newer dualities surface surface unprecedentedly in the likeness of action and pure mental and such excelling which yields the most mysterious thuria state the one and the many duality is more deeply pondered upon in complementary verses that are caught to both epistemological and ontological implications a new terminology shoots up in respect to the later sounding quite novel and even strange even to this present techno advanced world of ours contemplative science is a catchphrase to be kept in mind as the mystical pilgrimage gain more scientific status the universe of constant expansion and that of particles are brought together here to a common basis 
where distinct notions of space and time unite. Thereon, continuing the great voyage, the analogy of the ocean of consciousness is relaunched, but this time for a deeper dive, since consciousness now emerges from its own absolutist background, with nature assigned as the basis for pure action or pure act or motion, and the self, the depth dimension of the ocean and all others, like that of the ego consciousness reabsorbed into its origin, the central consciousness. Such a thought-moving usage of contemplative science could be attributed to the verses pertaining to the final section of the text, since the Guru correlates and stitches together the seemingly scattered basic fundamental elements and their corresponding neutral or cosmological attributes or relations, all screeching backwards as accreditions of the one alone. Further, the ultimate point of reduction of reality, nama Ruba combinations, are defrosted into the unity of the Absolute, sewing together both names and forms. Thus, contraries like that of being and becoming to attain such a neutral and unitive status, mingling phenomenological diversities with vertical unity in terms of pure becoming of the moment. Um, okay. The smoothness with which Henry Bergson resolved the famous Achilles paradox could be applied here as well when the Guru, through intuitive through intuitive methodology, distinguishes being and becoming, taking them in their purer implications rather than as mere static cinematographic points in space, as Bergson would love to put it. The twofold nature of nature is again revoked from a neutral psychophysical standpoint. The self, at the highest of human values, this gets acknowledged under one unit of scheme. Nature, here with a capital N, is the central reality to which both the enjoyer and the enjoyed aspects belong unitively. Both being and becoming, too, are recognized with a neutral reality, that which remain changeless, watching from on high, and the words of the Guru itself. So, okay, uh, reintroducing an earlier inverted pyramid model, all the limitless entities could be brought under nature configurations, all abiding in the correctly situated, distinctly compartmentized awareness pyramid to be walked backwards. Even the platonic idea of shadows of reality calls for revisits when the Guru, with a simple yet concrete analogy, presents a gifted artist's clever sketch of a snake, exposing the manifest world neither to shadows or actuality. This neutral stand is further elaborated by recalling the one and the many duality with a hint to the mutually exclusive nature of things in respect to the principle of the in impenetrability of matter. Finally, the Guru confirms the manifested to be neither real nor lacking in verity, but unpredictable. This unpredictability is not mere obscurity, but an inherent factor, itself a certitude, enabling one to go deeper to the error principle of negative uncertainty that the Maya factor is, the great tribulation that yields much puzzlements according to the Guru. This tricky factor needs to be outshined to abolish all persistent errors and uncertainties and to safely arrive at the unitive notion of the Absolute. Thus, the Guru asks for a thorough inward moving approach in order for one to be in possession of a stable philosophical ground. Maya, in modern terms, could be termed vaguely as being carried away. To fulfill the emergence of the self with the self, 
one has to travel backwards from the uncertainty and impenetrability of the visibles to enter realities kant had marked out the intelligible as the totality of rational beings considered as things in themselves this we have already this we had already taken note of of this he later claimed one can have no further knowledge this is where the guru philosophy triumphs and its profound seek into the unknowable between the vertical unity of potentiality and its actual horizontalized counterpart of realized dualities must be implied this mysterious negative agent maya which by default contains a creative potential resulting in phenomenological novelties only a correct balancing between these two poles as the guru reasserts yields the neutral cow fire spark analogy is a way to give validity to being a non being within a global or unitary vision of reality where everything is accommodated or taken into view fire as you allow to the more verticalized status while equally prolonging sparks becomes ontology personified thus the phenomenal world gains more or less a secondary status since the incandescent light should first burn away completely for the ontological sparks to emerge and display its own particular wonders elsewhere natraja guru writes how both the self and the non self could be equally fascinating and adorable as we proceed to the graded finale we bec- we come in interchangeable terms with a graded scheme of high values culminating in the one and secondless value of happiness content interchangeable with the notion of brahman already applied the notion of the ontological basis of reality to the absolute the existence reference is categorized as running through the graded value series the guru dedicates a whole verse that of 90 to stress on the experiential aspect upon whose existence all is enveloped existential verity or experiential certitudes are here given a primary status equitable or applicable with the truth the line the reality of what exists substantiates this okay. and then follows the closing and most important section signifying mostly the dear value linking the same with the above mentioned ontological aspect by giving it a generalized status as applicable to humanity as a whole finally after splendidly including scientific validities the guru moves backwards and merges this value factor with none but the self thus making them interchangeable terms verse 93 asserts the elimination of horizontal aspects since only then will the pure verticalized aspects representing the highest of human values of the self become attainable it endures adi shankaracharya treats the manifested as both real and unreal the jaina shadwada may be may be not to adopts such an unpredictable approach the guru here turns to limelight the indeterminate characteristic of the same a naughty play a naughty play of the great iniquity maya acting as a manipulative obstructive force and the logical path towards the absolute the active creative element of maya could sometimes be treated in par with the absolute notion and sometimes extraneous to the notion of the same causing much puzzlement and head scratching such as the unpredictable or indeterminate nature of maya after alluding to the maya factor and the one and the many duality in descending dialectics terming the former as the crust of the cosmic egg the guru goes on to revalue being and non being in terms of scientific methodologies pertaining to the atom hole duality which is valid even in today's modern world
Okay. Um, so underlying and all such dualities, the Guru again stresses is a vertical unity which has its correspondence to the ultimate unitive mystery of the Absolute. Thus, all such dialectical approaches, as has become clear by now, extends backwards to the one changeless being or self. In the Bhagavad Gita, in the Bhagavad Gita it says that all paths lead to me. In the glory of the Absolute Wisdom, amplified in verses 96 and 97, the atom and the infinite and other such already mentioned dualities cease, giving way to unitive bliss and absolute glory of freedom. Through a contemplative scientific study, both being and non-being too are here outshined. Finally, as you reach the final verses of the text, a full blast, as Natrajaguru would adore, and to the absolute wisdom shines incredibly and everlastingly. The Guru distinguishes a greater happiness value factor. The selfhood of Atman remain, and un remain unspent and so is the brilliant, brilliant oneness of knowledge and I. The final verse, one of the most poetic and lyrical lines ever written, in all its, in all its cryptic mystical marvel, does not ask for any mere analysis or research, but rather only spellbound adoration for one experientially attain the wisdom of one, represented by the syllables OM. And when one finally backs the self-realization that neither this, nor that am I, the realized person, gently, gently merge in Sat OM. That is it, the end. Thank you all for being for hearing this. Thank you.